Yay! Hey, this is not coffee. I'm drinking tea. I try to limit my coffee intake to twice a day. So I already had one, so I'm saving it for this afternoon. It's a nice October, late October in Montreal. And uh, yeah, okay. One of the things I talk about in my vlogs and my courses is how it's so important that you learn the core of the technology, the core of the languages. That's the key to launching your career quickly. Not learning this framework, not learning that framework, not learning this framework. Now, I originally got that principle from, drum roll, guess, martial arts. But I also relearned it in coding as well, programming as well. So let me give you a quick little story and then we'll get into it. When I was 18 or 19 years old, this is my eighth or ninth year as training in martial arts, judo, Japanese karate, kikushin, Japanese karate, uh, taekwondo, um, uh, kachikembo, wing chun, akito, uh, freestyle wrestling, uh, silat, I'm sure I'm forgetting something as well. But anyway, you get the idea. So I had done a bunch of different styles. So one day, one of my teachers in one of the styles said to me, Steph, pulls me aside. He says, Steph, listen, here's the thing. You've been doing martial arts for a while now. And you know this, you know, but it, you know, but it is, but it, but it is. The thing is, he says, you're an intermediate level martial artist still. Yes, you know all kinds of techniques from judo, you know, techniques from, from this style, karate, from Ketch Campbell, from Wing Chun, but you're still just, you execute at an intermediate level. If you want to become an advanced martial artist, you have to pick something and you have to work on that core. You gotta work on those fundamentals and then what's gonna happen, he said, once you, you do that, you're gonna quickly advance from intermediate level to advanced level and it's gonna reflect in all the styles that you do. You're gonna become advanced in wrestling, advanced in Wing Chun, advanced in Ketch Kemo, advanced in Taekwondo, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I didn't quite understand it at the time, what he was saying, but I decided that since this guy was far more experienced than me in martial arts, I should maybe take his advice. So I took his advice. And uh, sure enough, within a reasonably, reasonably short period of time, within a year or so, my skill level, I concentrated on one style, and that my skill level shot up. But what happened, as he said, I just became an advanced martial artist seemingly uh, overnight relative to you know the fact I had been doing it for eight, nine years. And that goes to the core. By concentrating on one style, I concentrated on the core. Getting caught up in all kinds of little techniques and stuff, it's kind of like getting caught up in the latest framework or the latest library, you know, in software development, whether it be web stack or otherwise. So let's talk about core in programming. So the first thing you need when you're gonna discuss, you need multicolored markers. This is going to be for JavaScript, orange. This is going to be for Python, it's green. And this is going to be for PHP, blue. And I'll use black for other stuff. All right, so let me just draw something on paper. So in my development courses, my programming courses, my coder courses, however you want to describe it. I teach not only core languages, foundation languages, but I teach core principles and techniques. So I have HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript, PHP, Python, SQL databases. In these core courses, you are exposed to just about everything that you need to know about software development. And then, with this base, you'll be able to explore whatever path you want to get into. So let me explain a few things. So this is the worst diagram ever. I couldn't think of anything better, better on the fly. This is a vlog, so whatever, here it is. So you see, I don't know if you can see that. So you see, uh, I got JS in orange, Python and PHP, foundations of pro developer. Why is that the case? Well, at least in the context of my courses. When you're looking at writing code, there's a few things you have to learn. So for instance, JavaScript JS, that teaches you something called client-side programming, client-side development. 
In computers, you got clients and you got servers. Servers like web servers, like database servers. And clients are like web browsers, right? Or apps in your iPhone, apps in your Android device that talk to servers. Server software sits on a server. So when you're learning JavaScript, what I teach you in my JavaScript course is much more than just JavaScript. I'm teaching you client-side programming and a little bit of web, well, not more than a little bit, and web GUI interface creation, GUI graphical user interface. JavaScript allows you to manipulate things in your page. It's built with HTML and CSS and allows you to turn them into responsive apps, apps that move around. I'm not talking about responsive design, if you understand that, but it just teaches you client-side programming. So when I'm teaching you JavaScript, I'm teaching you much more than just JavaScript. I'm teaching you client-side programming. Let me hop over to PHP. Now, PHP is a server-side programming language, the most popular for small business sites by far. I'm not saying it's the best language out there. I'm just saying it's the most popular. It's very powerful. When you want to develop web apps, my first choice is always PHP for a bunch of reasons, which I will not get into here. In my PHP course, I don't just teach you PHP. I teach you server-side programming. Again, I show you client-side versus server-side. PHP code runs on the server. And I show you how these, how client-side code and server-side code interact. I teach you the client, the request response model. I teach you session in server-side. All these sorts of things that are universal across the language, languages and across the framework. So if you learn this in my PHP course, all the server technology, the server concepts, you'll feel right at home if you jump into server-side programming with Java, server-side programming with Ruby, server-side programming with Python. You get the idea, right? These are universal session tracking, stateless nature of the web, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So my PHP course, I teach much more than just PHP. I teach these concepts. They're universal. They're applicable to all of those languages. So I got Python next. I also have a Python course. So why do I teach Python? Because Python is a general purpose programming language. So it can be used to create server-side apps like uh, PHP, web apps. It can be used for machine learning AI, which is uh, well, server-side programming as well, but it's general purpose. PHP, JavaScript, generally speaking, are more specialized. Python can be used in different areas. There's advantage, advantages and disadvantages to each of these languages. But again, in my Python course, I explore different things that I don't necessarily cover in the JavaScript PHP courses. Now, don't get me wrong, each of these courses are standalone, meaning if you do my JS course, you'll be comfortable with JavaScript, you'll be ready to launch into just about anything JavaScript. Do my PHP course, the same thing. Do my Python course, the same thing. But because of the nature of certain languages, I concentrate on certain things in each of them. So for instance, JavaScript is traditionally a client-side language, runs in the web browser. But now because of Node, you can do it on the server. But I don't teach Node in my JavaScript course because I teach the same concepts that you see in Node in my PHP course. So if you do my, my full stack development course, the JavaScript, the HTML, the CSS, and the PHP, and the SQL, you'll be able to, to jump into Node like this. You don't need a Node course. You'll be able to go to the Node docs and pick it up within a few hours. I'm pretty sure at least get something going, right? It takes you know, maybe a couple of days before you, you start being able to build an app, but it's, it won't be that difficult for you because the principles underlying Node are, are the same as the principles underlying PHP, underlying server-side uh, server Python, server-side Java, server-side C Sharp. I hope you get the idea. I have taken my martial arts experience and training that understanding that the core is key to advancing. And I've apl applied those to my courses. That's why I decided to not produce a Node course because if you do my, my web stack course, my full stack course, my IWD web development course and my Python, you'll be able to tackle anything easily. You won't really need other courses. You can do stuff on, that you find on YouTube. The lousiest of courses that you don't understand now, because most of these people who are teaching don't really know how to teach, all of a sudden they'll be very easy for you. You'll be able to go, oh, okay, boom, 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 boom. This is okay, this is what they're doing. No, this is how we do in PHP. Okay, do, 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 do. It'll be simple for you. 
So that's why I'm not coming out with these new things. I'm talking uh, more higher level, broader subjects, because I want to take you guys from being just code junkies, uh, people who are sort of concerned with, you know, with libraries. I want to take you to a higher level than that. And that's why I, I say, do my web stack, you do my foundation, my core training, everything else will come easy. So that's why I'm getting into the career in the, in the mindset of, of an advanced developer. And I'm getting into the, the entrepreneurial aspects of all this stuff. For me, a modern day entrepreneur, even if you have no interest in being a developer, if you understand a little bit about code and how things are structured, it will make you a much more effective entrepreneur because the reason so many young people now can become entrepreneurs is because the technology makes it possible. All right, I hope you enjoyed it.